So today I've come to Rutland Water in the tiny county of Rutland and at one point it was the biggest man-made reservoir in Europe. I'm going to take a look at Normanton Church which was partially submerged when they flooded the village um, when the reservoir was being created but it was saved um, by surrounding it with concrete and you can still enter the church uh, to this day. So we're going to take a look. So there's the church out there and as you can see it is partially submerged and the rest of the village is out there somewhere. Now I'm not entirely sure but I believe the reservoir was opened in 1967 and we're getting closer to the church so let's go and take a look see if we can get inside. And as you can see, it is a very large reservoir with parts of it going off behind the land you can see in the distance there. Now I have been in here in the past, quite a few years ago, but I, I have no idea as this was a random decision. So I have no idea if we can still get in here. Unfortunately we can't go in there at the moment due to the circumstances but it is set up and looks like it has some um, services in there it's got all the chairs and everything so I guess they still use it occasionally but we'll get the drone up now and have a look from above. So as I said, I'm at uh, Rutland Water, and I've met these two lovely young ladies, uh, and you are? Oh, me? Yeah. I'm very windswept sculptress Joelle. 
Right. And here to, to take some right. photographs, because we've got the, the bird fair has gone virtual this year. Right. And I'm here to take photographs of some new bronzes fresh out for the bird fair. And what's the bird fair? The bird fair? Oh, you must, you must find out about the bird fair. It's, um, normally it's an event which is held at near Oakham, actually on just off Rutland Water, to uh, celebrate bird life and things, natural history. So there's people from all over the world come to show their companies, show their products, show where you can go and find great holidays to discover birds. Real birds, this is, yeah. Bird birds, feathery birds. Feathery birds. And there's <laughs> artworks. Yeah, yeah. There's artworks, there's a gallery marquee yeah. normally. And you can get uh, binoculars, telescopes, all sorts of things. And great um, teaching, tutorials, films about wildlife from all over the world. Great to meet people. Normally it's, as I say, uh, held near the actual Rutland Water and this year we've gone virtual. And here I am at Rutland Water photographing bird sculptures and I meet this amazing guy who's, <laughs> who's taking aerial shots of, of uh, the whole area here. So yes, great, um, great encounters. So you're a sculptress, yeah? Sculptress Joel, always in capitals, aren't we precious? Yes, okay. Sculpt. So if, uh, I do run um, a, a slightly, um, how can I put it? It needs some support. Well, well needs some support. I, I Facebook and all the other social medias. Yeah, tweet even. Would you believe I tweet my birds? Yeah. So here we are. This this particular bronze is, is new for this year, and it's the first time I've really been able to explore using bronze. Um, I worked in the wax to achieve these leaves, and you, if you know your your birds, these are house martins. Yeah. So they've got the white rump here, and you can see I've put what I call Rutland colour to achieve the iconography, iconographic, iconic, something like that. Why is it called Rutland colour? Um, well, I, it's, n it's not, n not normal, shall we say. Um, when you want bronze to look a different colour, you use chemicals very often to achieve the colour, uh, chemicals and heat. But I don't just use chemicals and heat, I use pigments, stains, dyes and waxes as well as the chemicals and heat technique so hence I call it, I, I wanted to call it something and I'm local to Rutland so I call it Rutland colour. Right okay. There's, there's Austrian coloured bronze which is which is more of a painted look but what I like is this this sort of softer tech, softer touch. If I show you another one I've got another House Martin single here, I'll put that down very carefully. Um, love bronze because it's so strong um, but this particular piece you can you can see that you still see the gleam of the bronze uh -huh. and, and, the, and the touch of the color and if we look at the base there if I hold it up or I hold it up against the light it would be even better you can see, you can actually see through it you've got some lovely glitter glittering water look so this is the touch of water house martin right if, if people don't like that, you can just have them in with the, the bronze look. And this sand martin here, look, you're getting the whole works. Look at this. This is a sand martin. So this is the smallest of our swallows, swifts, house and it, martins it, and sand martins. So is that sitting on a piece of granite or something? This is um, actually a lovely piece of s Cumberland slate. All oh right, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, a, it's got these interesting colors to it. And, um, and I think the, nat the, the more classic bronze looks beautiful on that um, and again my speciality as a sculptor is to do detail yep. so you can get this sense of movement I hope because the, it's not quite like carving wood where you get to, things can look a bit static I like to put in the detail and then take it out so now, yeah I was going to ask you about that so how do you put in the detail uh, that all happens at the wax stage right uh, sorry the wax stage and prior to that when I when I make the originals in clay so I make this in a sort of modelling clay so I can get these details and then a mould is taken of, of the clay. Um, you, you, can, you can have a look at my website animalsculpture.co.uk and there's links there to all sorts of projects so you can look at the details of that. But once you've got the mould with the glossed wax process you take a wax out of the mould, clean the mould, take a wax out of the mould often you then have to put more details back in again and then the the piece has got another mold built onto it it's long and it is it does cost cost to do all these things but you build a a, a, a shell mold onto the wax which is fired 
because that's got to be able to contain the molten bronze when you pour the molten bronze. Yep. Uh, and there you have a, a, a piece which is a sort of classic uh, heritage piece of, of sculpture. Um, and I'm, although I do the, the more complex pieces, I do, do do things like the little wren that you might have seen, um, which is aimed to be more affordable for people. Um, the other thing about, uh, I do do have some little baby wrens and they're under, under 200 pounds, but um, they're cast in, in Britain and the skills involved in getting a good casting are considerable. Okay. So, and it, if, if your camera could do weights, you'd, you could feel that there's a, a lovely, you, my friend here was commenting on, on the weight of the bronze, there's a lovely weight to, the, to these bronzes. Where can people see you this year with your sculptures? Well, I'm, I've, I'm in the, the virtual marquee at the bird fair, um, on the bird fair site, which you can Google and get to, to the bird fair site. Okay. But also, if you want to pick up threads, yes, do visit animalsculpture.co.uk or check out Sculptors Joel on Facebook and, and Twitter. Okay. And, and yes, I'd love to be in touch and to let people know about projects um, and the, sort of the extra special features like um, use of glass and other materials in amongst the sculpture. And, and I do do portraits of animals, portraits of horses and dogs, so okay. it'd be lovely to, to be in touch with people. All right, well, thanks Great very much. Thank you all. Bye and bye you. Now. You're able, was it able assistant, right? Able assistant, yes. Thank yes, you, you are. <laughs> so there you have it, that's Normanton Church. Um, which I think you'll agree is an amazing place. The whole of this Rutland water area is beautiful, especially on a summer's day. And there's a lovely golf course at the side of it, which I've played on many occasions, which again is wonderful. Anyway, I was also met uh, the lady there, the sculptress, who um, sculptured the bronze figures that uh, she was keen to show to everyone. So, you know, go take a look. I have just got drenched <laughs> and I'm hiding under this tree at the moment but it's brightening up again over there well I hope you enjoyed that little trip to Rutland Water well at least part of it um, it was a bit of a last minute thing and to be honest with you I was filming in between getting soaked <laughs> a lot of rainstorms sun shining one minute and then chucking it down with rain the next anyway I did enjoy it it was nice to go back there I mentioned uh, Rutland Water Golf Course, where I've played on quite a few occasions. I haven't had a chance to play this year. Obviously, we had restrictions earlier in the year, um, but I'm sure we will get out here at some point. We're playing this Thursday, but not here. Uh, but I do live about 25 miles from here, so you know it is a it's a bit of a trip out to come and play golf. But shut that window. But well worth it. Anyway, this is it, and it's like playing by the seaside on a sunny day just down the bottom of the hill there is Rutland Water no, it's not going to show up on here is it but it's a wonderful course challenging and very long in places well it's very long challenging in places a lovely clubhouse now up until last year when we played here last um, you didn't book you just turned up, which is really unusual for a golf course of this calibre. But uh, let me just go round here and see. There's a there's the the 18 hole course, and then there's a nine hole course just down there, which is what it was when it first opened. It was a nine hole course there. Then it became a 12 hole course, uh, and then they completed the 18 hole, so they kept the nine and. Anyway, it is a wonderful location. Just seeing on the way out. I can't drive down the fairways, obviously. <laughs> well, not in the car, to show you what it's like. But um, yeah, a lot of the, some of the holes a bit further along the course are more or less next to the reservoir. And like I say, on a sunny day, it is amazing. I don't know if you can just see through that gap there, you can see the church right in the distance there where I was
Anyway, let me just stop with those wipers. Yeah, you can see the water over there, and the golf course goes over towards that way. Um, yeah, so if ever you're out this way and you like your golf, come and play this course because uh, you won't be disappointed. Anyway, back to base and get something to eat. And uh, until the next time.